Bruce Pierce, director of the ERA, broadcasting from Gateway Cygnus. If you can hear this, if anyone can hear this, you are not alone. They came from nowhere. We called it the invasion, but it was an annihilation. This is where the fight begins anew. We are the survivors. We are the fighters. And with your help, we will reclaim Earth. Ahoy everyone and welcome aboard, I'll be your Captain Hillian today along with... Isu Michael Tildrakir at your service and welcome to Showcase Sunday! <laughs> That's supposed to be line, line, but okay. Yep, Showcase Sunday number 112, where we'll typically try to showcase some four games, typically more if we go short with some, for about half an hour each, to see if they're any good for streaming uh, at some other time, and I forgot to turn on... Do not disturb mode again, so give me a sec on that. <laughs> Every time there's always one thing I forget, huh? There we go. Yeah. And yeah, the game that we're starting with today, also I I started up the wrong timer on my phone, so let me just stop that one and prepare the correct one. Well, <clears> he the first with that? Oh, you're ready already, all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not that slow with my phone. But yeah, the first game, yeah, first game we'll be showcasing today is called Second Extinction by the developers Systemic Reaction. Though I believe people call them more Systemic Abandonment because, well, there has no been... This game is still in early access, quote-unquote, but they haven't worked on it in over a year, and now the game has been officially cancelled, so in the next year they're going to shut it down. So, yeah, thanks for that, fuckheads. Oh, bloody... They're gonna soon realize that they can't keep doing that, unless they're just doing this for early access exploit. Would not be too surprising. But, yeah, this game is sort of like uh, an extraction shooter. You drop in somewhere, do a bunch of uh, objectives, and then get the fuck back out. Though there isn't, or at least to my knowledge, there isn't a PvP option while the multiplayer servers are down. So, well, tough luck with that. And, yeah, they, they, also run, they also have two other games on Steam, Ravenbound and Generation Zero. And I will... Generation Zero is a game we've also showcased. And though they seem to be keeping a work on that a bit more, people are fully expecting them to abandon it as well. Yeah, and <clears throat> Ravy, but I have heard that of that as well. That, but here's the problem. I, I would not be surprised if Steam will take action. Like, if they notice a developer keeps abandoning their projects, but still use early access, I would not be surprised if Steam will take action and do an investigation or something. Yeah. Okay, we have six characters that we can choose from, each with their own little abilities. Uh, Ortega here is a weapon master, can equip a primary weapon in place of her sidearm. Rosie, who can make real field repairs, which is, well, <laughs> of course, going to be useful in a game like this. So let's pick her quick. And yeah, then you can select between some weapons, which gets unlocked as you play, I believe, or... It has been a long time since I played, since, well, they stopped developing for it, so <laughs> haven't had too much reason to. And yes. yeah, a bunch of stats and such. Perks that you can unlock with them, I believe. It's kind of baffled, since if you look at it, it clearly has been a lot of work. And I just... True. Abandoned, like... Chris, how many games have they abandoned? I think I heard them abandon other games than those you mentioned. It could be that they did that under other names, or that they just don't have on Steam anymore. So to defeat one's enemy, one must know one's enemy. 
Not long ago, a unit was sent down to gather dinosaur eggs for research. We unfortunately seem to have lost contact with them and... Well, I need you to go in. Find out what happened to our unit, get them out if they're still alive, and lastly, complete their mission by acquiring those eggs. They would further our research greatly. Sarah will fill you in on the details. Good luck. Okay, let's see. Little is known about how or why the dinosaurs returned, only that they came from underground. And yeah, that's the thing with this game. <laughs> the enemies are all dinosaurs. <laughs> and they came from underground? Okay, so we finally got that bit cleared out for her. I said no, and says I heard of this game. No one knew where they came from. Okay. And so on the ground. The concept, okay. Yeah, the concept and general gameplay of this game is good. It's just the fact that uh, it's made by a f bunch of shithead developers, or maybe shithead managers, CEO, and such, that are just systematically having them abandon games. Yeah, and I, I, again, I may not be surprised if Steam take it, will take action against that if they notice. Yeah, then doing it too often. Right. Yeah, and I noticed uh, that uh, even if it's an honored company name, I noticed it's the same person behind the company with that damn same track record that only takes action against the, I'll say, like nope. You will not be allowed to sh put this game here unless you actually finish it or something like that. Yeah, they have taken action against asset flippers and such, and I forgot to start up the... <clears throat> Great. App. I'll relay the info to you. What's me? Okay, yeah. Uh, uh, asset flippers? Yeah, basically games where they just uh, take packets from games uh, development stores for, like, for the Unity engine, and then just... Uh, so you <clears throat> then just use those to make a to slap together a quick game without doing in any or much work of their own and sling that dinosaur. for full price okay yeah that's bad I, I can you see people who use paid assets temporarily yeah that's what they're supposed to be for yeah so if you use something like trees then that's fine with trees but when it comes to creatures Creatures, characters, such things, yeah, you want some proper models for those. Hmm. I'll inform the director. See if their logs are still functional. It's up to us to complete their mission. Sounds like they got a tracker on the T-Rex. If we send down a scanner, we should be able to locate her nest. Well, that's certainly not a bad idea. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, there are some things about this game that were really well thought out. Uh, were, yeah, were interesting, like... How difficult each area is is dependent on how on a collective effort of players. Like if a bunch of if a lot of players in an area manage to succeed in their missions. Good. <clears throat> I'll send down some carriers for the eggs. Let me know where you want them. Then the threat level in that area will go down. But if the a lot of players fail their missions, it will go up, and then it actually becomes more difficult. Which, of course, can escalate either way. Oh, dear. Yeah, she's home. <laughs> oh, that looks terrible. <laughs> Again, did they... I almost angrily abandoned this. Like, I didn't have too much hope for it, but I thought it would release a bit mediocre thing, but... And they intentionally tried to do it really, really well just to draw in any access money. Mm. That's actually kind of a bit of a gamble and stupid way, since... Yeah. 
you will truly get money, but may you get enough money to compensate for all the time spent making all this? Or let's be honest, this has money has been invested here. Yeah. So I I really can't see if there if, if there even would be profit to be made in this unless there's like some uh, tax shenanigan we going on or such. Uh, that would be horrible if that was tax and shenanigan. Hello, Rom. Yeah, hey, Rom. How are you doing today? Tired. Also, there's a good chance that tomorrow I might be a bit late on the go off stream, I gotta go at about 9 from my perspective to a bank to pay up dead. Uh, that's a long story. Yeah, okay. So basically, I'm letting you guys know in case I happen to have a bit of a delay or yeah. call up stream. No problem. Right? <laughs> it keep getting knocked down by the freaking Rex. <laughs> oh, and we should probably uh, choose our skins. I called dibs on Ash from Evil Dead, so I'm <laughs> playing Nick again. <laughs> okay, I'll probably take uh, I'll probably take Jack Skellington then. <laughs> so you're coach then. Yep. Okay, of course before I forget the ammo. Because I'm practically out on that. What game is this anyways? Uh, Second Extinction. Which, uh, well, it's about to be, it's going to be shut down next year, so might as well get a showcase in while I still can. Yeah, best to just play it for a bit, even if we're not gonna make those. Yeah, and maybe someone else will actually develop this into a full 1.0 game and such, maybe. at some point or another. Yep. Not too sure I've seen her come out of her nest that often, but I think her. Ah, oh, damn it! One of those. Yeah, those will flashbang you if you stay. T if, if you look at them. Uh, looks like I'm just attracting a lot of attention. Yep, here we go again. And yeah, that's what those barriers are for. I believe they're selectable equipment. It. Okay. Yeah, I hope someone else picked this up and finish it for. Ah, it, it, it's a thing like someone else developed Minecraft in so oh, late. Why didn't she get back in? Yeah. Um, uh, so I'm not, not too sure about that. Really talk about that. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was developed by one dude who then sold it to, like, Mojang, uh, but we don't talk about that guy who developed Minecraft. He's an okay. Alright. Uh, I know I saw him on Give Me For The Morning once. Sorry, but you're gonna have to go back in. That's what I'm talking about. No, you don't. Hopefully someone uh, buys it up. For all we know, there might be been there a plan all along. Could be, um... Uh... In which case, still a big move, but oh well. Maybe some other, de maybe some other developers will actually make a, <laughs> basically an XP of this game that actually gets the attention it deserves. So, I cannot have asked for a better team. <laughs> and yeah, Rosie is really useful for this since well, she basically has a heal that she can put out every so often and. <laughs> I got knocked around by the Rex. Also, I'm pretty sure we can uh, all guess where the weak point on the Rex is here. Yep, yeah, cornered myself. Let's at least put this freaking egg away so that this is done. Great. Well done. This is gonna teach us a lot about the enemy and hopefully it'll help fight them back. I'm marking yep. down nearby extraction points. If you wanna get back home, just let me know and I'll send the raft. And yeah, now we just need to get the hell out of this place. <laughs> 
As you say that. <laughs> Okay, it's giving up the chase, it looks like. And yeah, like with every extraction type game, once your objectives are done, just find a place to get the hell out. Though, of course, there are all over the place extra objectives that you can pick up, but this is just a showcase, so we're not going for that. But yeah, yeah it's, it's a damn shame that they just decided to fuck it with this game and sets a really bad precedent for well, all other games they will Could make in the future. Yeah, especially when they all have bad rep too. There could be many reasons for Iron Like, it could be that it was way more expensive than they expected it to be. Yeah, but they've, got multi they've also got Generation Zero running at the moment. So, uh, some part of it is likely just man, too many eggs to at, <laughs> at once. Yeah. Huh? It has happened like it. ArenaNet was planning to make more games besides Guild Wars 2 and 1, but many of them got cancelled due to layoffs and uh, other things. What the heck was that? And due to that, they had to refocus more on uh, their current games once more. Which some people did like, but they, I can't also see why they do expand out for more than just two games. Yeah. Okay. This would typically take quite a bit longer on the extraction. Maybe that's a difficulty thing that I forgot about, or maybe they changed it up. Oh. Maybe. And those are nest nests that are spawning them. This is Sarah's dropship service. Your dropship I'm moving for you with Ethan. <laughs> Okay, that, that was a lot easier than usual. Why are you shooting T-Rex anyways? Um. <laughs> Thanks to their efforts and yours, we may now have the resources and knowledge needed to potentially turn the tide of this war. Well done, EXU. Yeah, because basically humanity got driven off the planet by dinosaurs. <laughs> But yeah, typically that would take longer, and typically it would also bring in a few uh, heavy dinosaurs, like freaking Triceratops. Oh, the egg. Yeah. Hopefully we won't see why they had to have been like... My main guess is either tax thingy, or they realized between the other games they're working on and this one, this one takes the most time and the most money to develop. Uh, the officially like stated that. reason, I believe, is lack of resources. But that could just be corporate BS. Yeah, but, it could yeah. be true for... Like, the reasons could just be they don't have enough people to work on it. Yeah, by spreading themselves too thin by working on multiple games and such. <clears throat> Either way, it's going to be shut down at some point in the next year. And, yeah, I... I can't, I have to say, I feel rather slighted by them by just abandoning it after, well, paying for it and such, but that is part of the risk with early access. It just, it would have been less of a sting if it wasn't something they just did very often, apparently. But yeah. Yeah. We're not here to critique developers, we're here to showcase games. So let's move on to the second one. <clears throat> Yeah. 
What game is it? <laughs> uh, um... <laughs> yeah, this is Sega Mega Drive Classics, which technically doesn't fully count as a game, since this is more like a, a company-approved emulator, on which, well, it, there we go, click on the game. And uh, this game contains materials which may not be suitable for people with photosensitive epilepsy. Player disc uh, discretion is advised if you experience any issues with this or game fatigue. Uh, yeah, th this is more like an emulator that they uh, slap together themselves. Because this, when you buy, <clears throat> when you buy uh, Genesis and uh, such games of Sega on Steam, you run them through this game. And yeah, that is why there's only one game in here, Sonic 2. <laughs> because for every game of that kind you would buy, it would get it would get expanded over here. Though there are a lot, I did some more looking around on this, and apparently there are pe people who are not happy with this because some of the games that were <clears throat> that were sold before have been delisted. Though I don't know if pe that means that people who bought the game beforehand uh, still can access it or not. I heard it was some of the Sonic games or all of the Sonic games, but we still have Sonic 2 over here, so I'm presuming that's. Yeah, I'm presuming if you bought it before, you can still access it. But, yeah, hard to be sure on that. <clears throat> For now, though, let's put this one in here. And get to playing. <laughs> okay, so it's a paid emulator. <laughs> I don't fully really remember if you pay for the emulator itself, but I I can double check it in that bit. Yeah. Arrow keys, A to jump. And yeah, then it's just <laughs> classic Sonic. Okay. Yeah, the thing what the thing with having this as an official emulator is that it's a lot more likely to be less buggy, or at least you'd hope so. The other yeah. problem, though, is, of course, that there's the chance that it costs money, and yeah, all of that. Plus the fact that, yeah. well, they delisted games, so that is also going to be a, a complete ass ache. Yep. Time to they sold... One? Yeah, no, I'm just, I'm just really tired right now, so I think I'm gonna... Okay. See you next time, Rom, and be well. Get, get, get well, Rom. <laughs> okay, I can actually look up right now whether this is, will... this comes with I... the games or not. Okay, so that sound comes from Sonic 2. I never heard that sound before. I, I mean, I've heard it before in videos, but I've never heard it before this. You know. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you guys later. See ya. Stay from. You guys do. Yeah, let's say, like, okay, but I also say is, I've seen the companies sell CDs and such with, like, 200 old school games from the library and such, all in one CD. Yeah, though that often tends to be, uh, bullshit on its own, like, in some, Rebaz has had a, a video series on those things, and with a lot, it's just that they put the game, uh, multiple games, in multiple times to fill up the number. Yeah, I can see yeah. that. Like, I can see them actually be able to put in two hundred games on one CD with modern CD technology and how well small, very old school games were back then. Yeah. But it, yeah, damn it. Oh, I just realized it. Hmm. They should. I just realized. They, actually, yeah, they can actually do that. If they put in a manual that tells you what games are, uh, are in it, like if it says 200 games, give them a manual that says which 
all the 200 games. Let's New page. Yeah, but I think we get the feeling. I keep, think we get the deal with this now, though. Okay. Uh, let's back. So what's this with mods here? I'm presuming that's stuff you can unlock as you go. Extras, achievements, rankings, I presume. And then we can just mark it as a favorite. Uh, let's see. Sega Mega Drive and Genesis Classics. Da -da 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 -da. Let's see, there's a big-ass bundle to buy with all of this, but is there a price for the emulator on its own? Let's see. If the emulator on its own is free, that's fine. Though, if it's paid, then you expect it to be of good quality. Hmm. I'm not seeing it actually listed with a price of its own here, on this page at least. Uh, let me try again. Mega Drive. Okay, that's bringing up something else. Some high mega dimension. Um, hmm. Okay, that's odd. It's only showing it as, well, with the separate games themselves in the bundle. Though so you can, of course, pick them up individually from that if you like. Or, and just the page itself for the emulator <clears throat> points towards the bundle. So, hmm. each of these are only like a year, one euro for me. Uh, let's see, if I look on Sonic 2, does that bring you up? Did, did, that, did I maybe pick up Sonic 2 at some point and get the emulator through that? Okay, that, yeah, they, they delisted those games from this, so those are not showing up. Okay, that... That makes it a bit weird of how I got it then. But yeah, I can definitely see uses of it. The games are freaking cheap on Steam, like a euro each. And there's also the online multiplayer that was over in the corner. That would obviously not apply to, to, to all of the games, but would still, be yeah, would still probably be fun for those that do have that as an access. Because yeah, back in the day, you, you couldn't do multiplayer online with those games. Uh, you could, but uh, it was a, oh, how would you say this? The early days of MMOs. Difficult. During the 70s and the 80s. They were very text-based and slow, indeed. Yeah, but I, I meant for the consoles and such. Oh, yeah, then, yeah, yeah there was nothing for the consoles. So yeah, moving on to the third game from Software, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Now, I don't think I need to explain too much about this game because it's basically been universally loved, I believe. <laughs> I actually watched, tried to watch a little bit of it. Okay. And uh, I don't, I think I used at that time I tried to watch it, I just didn't feel for it. Let's see, blood, subtitles, auto hides. Let's just go with the basic defaults and see how this goes. Uh, let's see. Uh, this game and Ghost of Tsushima have both been universally loved, I believe. Let me start the timer.
ましな一心国取りの決戦であった。You look a bit small to be trying to be wielding that. No line in the Procorus or Nakustaka. Oh, Tomoni Kuruka Ueta Okami. So she did. Ixaba the Hiro Wareta Okami, Shunyo no Sue. 熟達の忍びとなった忍びの掟は忘ればいらん親の次に大事なものお前の心に刻むがよいあれが今日からお前のあるだ命を閉じてもの、たとえ奪われるとも <clears throat> okay, I'm pretty sure at this point it's basically half a joke that FromSoft only makes versions of Dark Souls, and this basically being the samurai version of that. But it isn't fully accurate. Like they, they were making games long before Dark Souls. Ashina no kuni wa shayou ni ari. Okami no shinobi wa subete o ushinatte ita. Sodate no gifu mo mamoru beki aruji mo. Okay, let's see. Yeah. WASD. Uh, since Hina mentioned they done games before Dark Souls, it's kind of true. From what I gathered from actually just stumble people doing reviews of their earliest games from all the way back to PlayStation 1. Did yeah, they've been... Been... <laughs> they've been around for a while. Yeah, it, apparently from what I gather, they may have been slowly perfected everything what we call the Dark Souls formula nowadays, already as far as back as the PlayStation 1, but that game stand for that have those elements. Yeah, I mean, it's also like the Moonlit Sword or something. Uh, there, there are some weapons in, like, nearly every bloody From Software game, from those early ones to Dark Souls and, I believe, even Bloodborne. <laughs> Let's see. Let us thrown into a well. Kuro's Wolf. Your destiny awaits you at the Moonview Tower. Escape from the well and find the tower bathed in moonlight. Even without a blade, you can reach it. Stay silent, stay vigilant. Okay. I activated my controller for this since it's using those icons anyways. Since, well, game was ported. Okay, wall jump. 
And yeah, we are a lot more mobile than your typical from software character, huh? Yeah. So they typically <laughs> they typically move more like a a tank that's stuck in the mud. Yeah, no, there is one thing I kind of find annoying with Dark Souls. It does more. People say Dark Souls like, and then I, then whenever I, I ask, okay, what makes it Dark Souls like? Is it combat? Excuse yeah, me, what? I just go. I highly doubt the combat itself makes it Dark Soul. Yeah, there's more aspects of it, like stamina bars, uh, exhaustion. Uh, if you get killed, you respawn, but you lose a bunch of your stuff. And if you don't get to back before you die again, you lose it permanently. That would be more closer to Dark Soul, to Souls-like, as they are typically called, yeah. I believe. That, I agree with you, the later half. The combat itself, Mr. Like, many games have used stamina. Many games have used parry and dodge. Yeah. Hmm. <clears throat> I'd say that the most the thing that is most souls like is just the the chance of losing your currency if you die again. Yeah, but that is just one thing. So it's a lot more. Also, we just the plain difficulty, a lot of lore being in items and such that you need. Yeah, lots just not being told itself. But yeah, let's see stealth. Yeah. Advance without being seen by crouching in bushes or moving on the floors. You do not have a sword at the moment. Use stealth to avoid enemies and heads to the moon view tower. If you're about to be seen, warning markers appear above enemies' heads. And yeah, this is something you don't typically see in a souls like either, eh? <laughs> Another thing I guess would be so slight will be the aesthetic. Like all of the games have been rather Oh, my favorite way to say this almost almost grim dark. Yeah. Like, you're typically not put in your typical fairy tale world, even if there are many fantastical things. It's typically, uh, yeah, not <laughs> going to be a nice place. Would love of. Mm. I thought you were to do a dum dum there again. <laughs> okay. But yeah, this game. This game stands out for being. Well, a lot more stealth focused with everything, huh? Or at least having it as an option. Let's see, I have I have Ghost of Tsushima for the PlayStation as well, but I haven't really touched that game. Even though I, I've heard nothing but praise for it. Oh, I, I, I know I, someone I, who I, will uh, <laughs> encourage you to play it. Yeah, I kind of want to do it on stream, though, just to see how you would react to everything as well. I'm up for it. Um. Loosening of the fist. If that's just the hill, that's a big fucking sword. I oh, no, no, it's <laughs> the other way around. So let's be honest, Dark Souls is also kind of known for its massively oversized weapons. <laughs> like you some mean, like, put the yeah, buster sword from Final Fantasy around. <laughs> let's see, Revered Blade. Hmm. Kusabi Maru, a katana given by Kuro, the divine heir, an heirloom of the Hirata family, a cadet branch descendant from Ashina, once thought lost it has found his way back into the hands of the wolf. Name 
Kusabimaru beseeches a shinobi's role is to kill, but even a shinobi must not get mercy. A man for the blade itself may manifest. Okay. Yeah. The... I cannot I find it interesting, like... And well, another very Dark Souls thing, <laughs> every fillable health thing. Yeah, but there was a swords in many cultures, a massive amount of them actually. It's kind of funny that the rare weapon that was mostly, not always, but mostly meant as a sidearm slash backup or, well, as a weapon when you walk, uh, take a walk or something, since <laughs> easy to carry a sword or dagger than go walk you walking in town with an axe. Yeah. There's also, the fact with, yeah, there's also the fact with samurai that typically when people think samurai, the first weapon they think of is the, the katana and such, but typically their real main weapon would be a bow because typically samurai would actually fight from horseback and you're going to have a lot more reach with a bow and <laughs> instead of a katana on that. Yeah, they, they would have it, of course, as a backup, but still. <clears throat> yeah, but it did also favored spears and, well, calorie charges. Yep. But prob easier, they probably, re one, like, they were always expected to re heavily train with the katana and swords as well, since, well, there's a reason why military are very dedicated to train with pistols. Since yeah, you kind of need to know to use it. Use it. <laughs> Sorry, what? You kind of need to know how to use it to be allowed to be <laughs> wielding it. Yeah, hmm. and while the bow and spear, like you saw most in the in battlefield, but let's be honest, bandits probably suffered a lot by the sword. Yeah, let's see, healing gourd, a gourd filled with vitality restoring medicine. The resting refills the gourd, made by an apprentice of the extraordinary Dr. Dogen. Though it is strange that the gourd's medicinal waters refill automatically, the seeds within may hold the secret to how it works. Okay. さて、その後の まずはその橋下の抜け穴を見つけてきてほしい。見つけたらそうだな。足の歯笛で合図をくれるか。ほら、昔聞かせてくれたであろう。こうピーッとな。その音を頼りにその他の元へ行こう。オッケー。Let's there, uh, I need to equip it first, it seems. Yeah. Uh, I'm too happy for subtitles for... <laughs> yeah. I think the reason I can handle your base a bit better is I have heard it so much I can not outright translate it. I may recognize some words and phrases thanks to subtitles, but also, constantly, but also in depending, it is easy to recognize by tone what is uh, going on, sort of. Yeah. Tone is typically a bit more universal. Let's see. Posture and death blows. A shinobi aims to break an opponent's posture. Attacking an enemy is one way to achieve this. When an enemy's posture breaks, he is vulnerable to a shinobi death blow. Okay, right back uh, shoulder to attack. Uh, what the heck? Uh, do you see mm. the picture? It's a right stick. The enemy in the picture had quite a bright eye. I think that was the signature for that, the death blow. Oh, I thought he was having that, you know, you see some anime cartoons that like that, where you have the opponents that have that ev very evil <laughs> red glinted yeah. eye. Yeah. 
<laughs> I thought it was that at first. Okay, by locking onto your target and keeping your enemy in front of you, you'll find a much easier attack. Deflect and perform other battles. Okay. Inflict the stick to change targets. Uh, deflection. Sometimes relentless attack is not enough to break an enemy's posture. Deflecting enemy attacks is another way to damage their posture. A master shinobi uses a combination of deflect and attacks to achieve swift victory. Okay, left shoulder button to parry. Or the oh, hello. There we go. And hello, Pyro! Hey, hey Pyro. How are you doing today? We're just showcasing games we're trying on later sometime, and we're currently on Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Okay, you are a lot more defensive. So let's just cut underneath that. And how are you doing yourself, Pyro? Uh, let's see, how... Okay, the Gord has no uses at the moment. But how do I mark it for quick unit, for quick using? Homeward Idol? Uh, held by the wolf ever since he was saved by his father. Okay, this Buddha is used to return home. Will re return the user to the last visit the sculptor's idol or to the levitated temple? Okay, so a, a quick... <clears throat> a quick return to your lost uh, resting point. Okay. Counter Slash. A Counter Slash can be performed immediately after deflecting an attack. This allows you to do posture damage without giving the enemy time to recover. Yeah, your typical uh, repost. Or repost. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that down there is our posture. Okay. Let's see, death blow against strong enemies. Some powerful enemies require multiple death blows to be killed. The number required to kill is shown on the red circular markers above their vitality bars. Okay. And uh, yeah. yeah, I see it now in the upper left. Yep. And dead. Oh dear. Let's see, man, we're big chilling. Sekiro is a whole vibe. Yeah, I've heard nothing but good about this game. <laughs> Though it is in part a Souls-like, so... And, of course, when we reset, all of these return. So, whilst I really want to stream this game, there's also the chance that it might absolutely kick my ass. Yeah... Uh it's probably why I say Go to Chusima might be a better option in that way, for it's more story oriented. So I don't think it's. I'm not sure if Go to Chusima is made by the same team as Dark Souls. I don't think it is. Oh, so yeah, that's just good combat, a good story there. So. This one, for a Dark Souls like. Does seem to have a bit more story, but it does still have that thing that does add the difficulty. Yeah. Uh, let's see. This game is notoriously delightful. I like the change in the form from uh, previous uh, games prior. Yeah. Like it still has the cores and such. Like very, very difficult but fair combats. Yeah. And well, the whole respawning and <laughs> refillable healing stuff. But at least, I, from what I believe, this one is considered among the easiest of the games. As much as I'm getting my ass absolutely kicked, but then again, I'm not, I'm not too used to uh, Souls-like games. <laughs> Yeah, a game from from games. Um, yeah. yeah, I agree. That was probably a bit, a bit of a tongue twister. I didn't even pay attention. I was focused on watching the combat. Yeah, okay, I'm get I'm getting it now. More the bar below is more our defensive stamina, not our own our, our defensive posture. Basically meaning how many blows we can deflect before they break through our guards. 
but yeah, parrying and you know, such has always been a thing in the, in most of the From games, or at least Soul games. But in this game, it is even more important than usual. Like, get up. There we go, first death blow. And dead again. <laughs> yeah, if I'm having too much trouble already at the start here, uh, yeah. I was saying, is that guy kind of really something? From my hearing from history, most of the time, were you great swords were used in wars, but not too oftenly. Is it... But what is a pattern I have noticed? Okay, why can't I put this thing as a quick item? No idea. But yeah, most of the times you, when you give someone in the military a great sword, it will be the tall one. Yeah, because they typically have more. Uh, easier time using it, and now I'm getting my ass kicked by the basic ones. Yeah, for that, uh, is it they usually will have given the train to handle it well, use it well, and just yeah, you have a big person with a big sword, and he knows how to use it. Yeah, th there's both physical fear and just met like it's almost a psychological warfare there. Yeah. Let's see, there was a bit of a tongue twister. Ease game, just block Kappa. That's <laughs> Kappa? Yeah, they're definitely... I'm, I'm definitely expecting there to be mythological beasts sooner or later, but Neo is a lot more on the uh, immediately mythological uh, aspect, with uh, it being a Souls-like. Yeah, I was very kind of curious. Like they, are, they are spoken like they are very powerful, dangerous creatures. Yes, they are. But they have a curious weakness that makes you always wonder: Would they not almost be easy? Yeah, you need like, to know how to trick them in the first place, and it's a lot easier to communicate such things these days. Back in those days, you would need to be lucky to have met a priest who would know at some point. And well, tell you about those specifically, since there are so many beasts. Uh, yeah, in Kappa specifically, it's uh, if I remember right, you need to tip over the bowl, so they lose the water in the bowl on the head. Yeah, that's a quick clear. If it gets empty, they die, if I remember right. Yeah, or no, at least they get weakened. There we go. Just need to play a lot less aggressive. Pellet. Medicinal pellets that slow the restore vitality. A secret treatment passed down for generations in these lands. Records say it has been used in battles since times long gone and lent to the famous you know, resilience of Ashina warriors. A pill case full of these pellets would also serve as a battle charm. Okay. And <laughs> okay, perfectly timed because the timer for this game just ran out. But yeah, let's take a little bit of... What is this? Fistful of Ash. As gripped in a tight, hardened clump. Throw an enemy to temporarily distract them. In Ashina, the snow falls thick and thus the heart runs thick with ash. Okay. A bit there, because <laughs> the hearth with H at the end, the fireplace. So yeah, of course, it's <laughs> because it's snowing, they need to spend a lot more firewood. And thus, while filling it with ash. Uh, is there actually a way to go here? We, we, this is a hangable ledge, but I don't see anywhere we'd want to go. But, yeah. This game would absolutely kick my ass a plenty, but I still want to stream it eventually. <laughs> we'll just have to well, find an point to put it alongside other games that uh, would not cause my blood pressure to skyrocket. <laughs> Yeah, like, here's the thing, I've been saying people, like, they, they probably avoid uh, 
But if we still give them will most likely raise not only Helion's blood pressure, but minus wealth somehow? Which has yeah. happened. That's a game less likely to be screamed. The most important is for his blood pressure, for he's the one holding the controller. Yeah, and it, it, this still needs to be enjoyable for all of us. So yeah, on to the next game, which is called Semblance. Which I know practically nothing about. So, press up. Let's see, some wonky tree. Let me pull the batteries from my controller to deactivate it. Save a little bit on battery power. And... Well, that's not supposed to happen, I believe. And instead of a Jade C, we have a Jade Forest this time. And... Is it trees and cacti? Hard to tell. Okay. Oop. And here are we. Blob. <laughs> Okay, okay, if those in background are cacti or due to simulate, it, it might be like due to simulate, it looks like cacti, but it could also be a trees. I don't know, remember names, but I do know you may have seen them a lot in prehistoric pictures and artwork. Okay, they do look a bit tall for cacti, but cacti can get really big. Yeah, okay, so we, we've got a dodge. They can be get big as trees. And okay, we can as also dash even. down. We can dash up, and we can actually deform the environment a bit by doing that. Okay. Except we, that, likely. Yeah, that we want to touch that. Okay, break through that. Let's see, alt, and... Oh, that... that Pulse environment? Or does that correct environment? Okay, yeah, that corrects it. So it seems to be what? at least so far. Is this entire thing organic? Sort of. Okay, four trees. Four trees to cleanse, I'm guessing. And what have we here? Next. Okay, we now have that. Okay, I, I like I like the minimalism of not telling anything and more imaging it out and such. That can, of course, have its own drawbacks. Yeah, but still, in general, I like it. I would say it's one of those things that it could become a hit and miss. Yeah, if it's but done it's well, well it works. Yeah, <laughs> if it's not done well, it's going to leave a lot of people confused and annoyed. Yeah. Let's see. Six spheres. I'm guessing six things we need to cleanse to fix the tree. Hmm. Fix that. Okay, th three trees sending something somewhere. Energy. Ooh. I like this terrain deformation that we can do, but it does seem that it has a limit to how far it will go. Probably to avoid you breaking things completely. Uh, let's see. 
Okay, if, if we touch, we get jaded as well. Can't break that. Hmm. Actually. It's a rather simple... A, a rather simple solution here, if I can get close without getting my ass turned to jades. There. Uh, that was not supposed to... Can I... <laughs> okay, we can dig ourselves a little hole. And it stays between... Okay. Okay. Jump this time instead of reforming it. There we go. That's one of those done. Five more to get to cleanse the tree, I'm guessing. Uh, let's see. Bring that up. Bring that up. There. And now we can go back and forth without me. <clears throat> without danger. I I'm liking I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. Uh Okay, yeah. It is curious, but hmm. uh, I'm 50-50 on this one. Okay, so that for that one we need to not dodge at a... Uh, actually... There, lower that down and still get killed. Okay, we need to beat the ground down enough. So that's... Yeah, there we go. We don't dash into the spikes. Yoink. And th this game definitely has potential, but the fact that it's also this silent uh, kind of defeats the point with us a bit that we, yeah, we pick games mostly for story and such. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It makes these games really tricky. Like, the, I like some silent games we ha I think we have streamed. It was possible, but still. Okay, we can't deform this bit here for some reason. Or am I even getting the dash on that? No. Hmm. Hmm. Don't see how that would help. Uh, For game mechanics, okay, that there we go. Interesting and unique, as far as I can tell, at least. Okay, so yes. entirely purple blocks like that, we can just move around by bashing into them. Also, we can oh, destroy nah. those. Probably should. Hmm. Okay. Look at. I feel like, like I'm about to say one thing. I feel like we've been, especially you, been saying a lot uh, during these last uh, showcase Sundays. And that be good gameplay, good game mechanics, but not enough, not enough story. Yeah. Put it all back. Beat this upwards. Yeah, it starts to go flat again once it reaches. The maximum distortion, and there we go. That's six. Another one of those to smash. There might be something behind smashing these, like a hidden achievement or something. Hmm. Okay, and that's this little tree cleansed, but not the big one. That's. And another one. Okay. Yeah, basically each of these is going to be a level where we need to solve physics puzzles with these. Or physics and platforming puzzles. And uh, let's see. Hmm. Okay, we need to get past these. But we also... Okay. That's not that, of course. Okay. First one is easy, we just need to 
get that platform up high enough so that we can actually get past. <clears throat> yep. Okay, so this thing does make noises. It... Yep. It's a real it's a bit slippery. It's it's literally a blob, so that makes full sense. Hmm. Actually, can we dash multiple times, maybe? Hmm. Because we need to dash to get up high enough. Hmm. Or, actually, I'm being an idiot. There we... Up. Oh. Okay, there's a barrier that we need to bash through. There, and there, that gets us one bit, and we can move on. And it looks like the level design is getting a bit more complicated, seeing as we're, there's a bit of verticality now. Mm, I, uh, if it had a little bit more like Wolfie's stylish storytelling, I figured would have said yes to this, but I might yeah. need no for this. It is definitely interesting, but probably a no on this for me as well. Let's see. Okay, let's push that up. Can we reach that now? Yep, yep. Okay, <laughs> just zoom around there. There we go. Okay, that's two out of five. Anything here, or is this just a long way over? Okay, we can't bash the ground, so we'll have to move. We'll have to jump over it. This one, not jump into it. It's still moving when you respawn. Yeah, though so it does put you down in a safe-ish area, away from where they should be able to reach. Yet you still died when you respawn the Twitter very quickly. Yeah, I, I ran into it. That's what happened there. Yeah, but I feel like that might be an oversight still. Hmm. Okay. Oh, can't push this up. Okay, how are we supposed to... Hmm. Okay, let's head back. We missed one that would have been down below. Maybe there's something we can unlock somewhere around here as well, maybe. Yep. Yep, we can unlock a nice green hue. Okay. Let's restore this thing, because I kind of bonked it wrong. And yep. This would probably be easier with the controller, but I've already shot it off. Okay, it won't go further than that. Okay, that's just enough. Okay. Hmm, how do we solve this last bit, then? Oh, also, one of those crystal fleas here that's out of reach, but we'd have to... Okay, we could reach it if we went down again to bash that in. Okay, why can't we move this, bash that one out of shape? Hmm. Let's reset. Okay, so we can either move you or deform you. Hmm. Yeah, let's reset. Okay. Actually, I think it might have been closer to it previously because we need this. Yeah, we need the big one out on the other side. So that means that this one needs to go to the right. So we can actually reach up towards it. Uh, reset this. Bring that up. 
And then we can... Hmm. Okay, it's either deform or displace. We can't reach that upper one without... <clears throat> hmm. Okay, that one has me stumped. Hmm. You can at least bring four of these out. It's not going to fully heal this thing. Hmm. Well, I find it curious is this game, but I also started to find it boring as well. Yeah. It, again, like an example of a good game, but probably not really our style. And I'm pretty sure this next one is also the same on that. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, this is Sentinels of the Multiverse, which I believe is actually a card game. Let's see. Uh, let might as well play the tutorial to show this off. But yeah, as you can see, this is a very golden age of comics. <laughs> Stand down, Baron. The price of your hatred should not be the entire planet. That mad scientist-looking guy is Baron Blade, a devious supervillain. He's attempting to pull the moon into the Earth with his doomsday device. But luckily, the Freedom Four are here to stop him with your help. Press onward when you're ready to begin. Okay. Freedom Four. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I wonder where they got that inspiration from. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. I'm Christopher, I'll be your guide. The game always begins with the villain turn. Baron Blade's mobile defense platform makes him immune to damage, so you will first have to take it out. First, he will play a card. Let's see. Blade Battalion. At the end of the villain turn, this card deals to hero damage. Blade Battalion is a target, meaning it is a card with HP, so it remains in play until destroyed. It deals damage to a hero target at the end of Baron Blade's turn, which is now. Okay. Damage to Legacy, who is totally not <laughs> a Superman XP. Uh, also, it reminds me, you remember Captain Man from uh, Nefarious? Yeah. I finally understood just uh, some days ago what he is a reference to. And that is? Every superhero that ends with man or starts with Captain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, this just makes it more painful for Captain Man sounds so horrible. <laughs> it's probably why they took it. Yeah. Okay, now it's Legacy's turn. Let's look at his cards for a second. Double click on back fist strike in the bottom left corner of the screen. Let's see. <laughs> typical typical action character move to just hit someone in the face without even looking. Uh, double clicking will bring up the full card where you can read exactly what it will do. The yellow keywords box tells you what this card uh, tells you that this card is a one shot. That means when you play it, it has an immediate effect and is then discarded. This card has will have legacy deal four melee damage to a target. Okay, play cards. Now it's time to choose the targets for that four me HP melee damage. Any card that has HP is a target. Choose the mobile defense platform by kicking it once. Okay, that has 10 HP. And yeah, just to make certain, press confirm so you don't accidentally attack something you don't want to. Okay. <clears throat> uh, then we'll click on your character cards. Notice that the mobile defense platform now has 6 HP. Yep. When it's reduced to zero, it will be destroyed. So now that you've played a card, it's time to use a power. Double-click Legacy's character card to see what his innate power Galvanize can do. Let's see. Awesome. Legacy makes his teammates more effective. Press Use Power to increase the damage dealt by heroes until Legacy's next turn. Let's see. In okay, increase damage by hero targets by one. Okay. It doesn't seem to have a cost. Maybe a cooldown. Let's see, now that you've used the tower, or maybe used a power, not the tower, <laughs> it's time to draw cards. By default, the game will automatically draw a card for you as long as it's safe to do so. Each of your turn follows a simple pattern. Play, power, draw. Click anywhere to move on to the next hero, Bunker. 
Okay, we get Fortitude. Ongoing, reduced damage by one. One shots aren't the only way to deal damage. Bunker has a flak cannon. It's an equipment card, so when you play it, it stays in front of you in your play area, which is just above your hand area. A quick way to play cards is to drag them up from your hand into the play area. Drag flak cannon up. Okay. Now Bunker has two powers to choose from. One on his character cards and one on the flak cannon cards. Any power, any card with a P icon on it has a power you can use. A quick way to use powers is to single click them on, single click on their cards. Okay. Uh, okay. So it, bring, it brings up just a description. Deals one tar dam, well, one target three projectile damage. Okay. Uh, it kind of looks like a combination of the thing and juggernaut. <laughs> yeah. And silver cannons for arms. Okay. Plus one damage, so that's dealt four. It only has two left. Reduce damage dealt to bunker by one. Okay. Let's see. Defense platform only has two HP left, but don't forget about Baron's Blade's pesky minions. Good thing the Wraith has some throwing knives in her hand. Yellow keyword box tells us it's an equipment card. Ta -da -ta, a power. Other icon you see indicates that this card deals projectile damage. Double click to read more or drag it into play. Okay, so that gray uh, can, yeah, can deal up to three targets, one projectile damage each. Okay. This one makes me think of that Raven characters that everyone seems to want to do a lot of fan art of, and so yeah. you <laughs> other characters into one. Let's see. You can only use a single power in a turn unless you have a card that says otherwise, let's throw some knives. Okay. Uh, Legacy's power increases damage by one, so throwing knives will deal two damage. The sec uh, the, yeah, that one first. Okay. Confirm. And there goes that. Okay, but we still have damage to deal. You destroyed the uh, defense platform. Well done, Baron Blade is now vulnerable. Choose Baron Blade as your second target. Notice that Legacy's power increases every instance of damage dealing. Confirm when ready. So yeah, stuff like that is really useful on multi-hit attacks. So... And... Okay, it, it can't hit the same targets twice. So it only leaves the Blade Battalion left. Okay, reduce damage by environment cards, okay. Some cards allow heroes to play additional cards. Tachyon is pushing the limits card, lets her draw an extra card during her play phase and draw an extra card during her draw phase. Uh, what? Play an extra card, Blech, not draw cards that twice. Wait, Tachyon and... Wait, I thought she was speedy! What? No, no she's... The... She's the time controller? Uh, it looks more like she is a mixture of uh, a light-based character and a speed-based character. Because Tachyon's going her, real fast. Look and behind her. Yeah, a, a light effect. And the over here you raptors. can see her dashing. Hmm? Don't you see the raptors? The, those, those are just in the background from everything, I'm guessing. Or oh. Maybe... Uh, no, that's just her own background. Or is that environmental? Uh, I, I think uh, each of them has a different-ish environment. Wait, wait, wait. volcanic area. Wait, oh, that's hers, that's hers. For the environment next on Blades is completely different. Actually, not that much. It also has jungle and volcano. Yeah, and but it gets split up between them. Yeah, for... Also, Tachyon is usually... One of those where you throw into any f most time travel thingies. Hmm. Anyways, the catch is that she will have to choose to deal herself two sonic damage at the start of her turn, or the card will be destroyed. But since we're already past the start of her turn, that won't happen until her next turn. Okay, pushing the limits, and that definitely looks like a speed sir effect, though, which <laughs> typical of running across the planet multiple times. Let's see, can play another card. So let's play Nimble Strike. It's a one-shot that deals one damage and allows Tachyon to immediately draw a card. Okay. And yeah, might as well deal with them. 
<clears throat> it only leaves one HP left. Accelerated. Yeah, she's she's a speedster. <laughs> Not a time a thing. The, the, why the heck? Let's see. Uh... I think it, I think it's just the much. environment. We're we're on some prehistoric uh, volcanic jungle islands. No powers deal damage. Tachyon's innate power, rapid recon, lets her see the next card she will draw and decide whether or not to discard it or to draw different cards. Okay. I Use think she's power. Hers for the other ones you see up there have different uh, backgrounds. Hmm. Now I think it's just a different background for each of them. That. It is still the same area, like Jurassic Island. Let's see, Re research grants. Draw two cards, discard a card. Okay, discard it or not, the choice is yours. Keep in mind that pushing the limits will allow Tachyon to draw two cards this turn. Uh, let's not discard that one. Okay. Blinding speed, destroy one environment card or one ongoing card. Yeah, now it's the villain's turn again. Also, it's, it's a rather simple effect to do that page turn thing, but it's still very neat. Uh, mm. uh, oh, it's the environment that gets a turn now. Velociraptors. The environment is a place, not a character, and it acts from the right page on its its turn. Uh, since we're on Insula Primalis, that means dinosaurs. The environment does not always discriminate between heroes and villains. Click to see how the cl this clever girl goes after the Blade Battalion. <laughs> okay, they just got eaten. Okay. And it's Baron Blade's turn. Okay. Mm. Another, uh, that is an interesting way for call for. I never see a call game that has a quote unquote neutral player. Yeah. Okay, Baron Blade's turn again. Each round of the game starts with the villain turn, followed by all the hero's turns and finishing it with the environment turn. Cards can have effects that trigger at the start or end of a turn. For example, there are ever, if there are ever 15 or more cards in the villain's in the trash at the start of Baron Blade's turn, his Terra Lunar Impulsion <laughs> Beam activates, pulling the moon into the earth and it's game over. Click anywhere to see what Baron Blade has in store for us next. Haste and Doom. Okay, two toxic damage. Yep. Some cards like Haste and Doom cause damage to be dealt to many targets, and sometimes the order doesn't really matter, so let the game choose. Press the Choose uh, for Me button in the lower right. Okay, that'll just speed that up. Okay, and since Legacy his, is his nemesis, he got to deal more damage to him. Also play the next card from his deck right now. Remote powered turrets. Okay, that's equipment for him. You may have noticed that Baron Blades dealt extra damage to Legacy. That is because Legacy and Baron and Blade are nemesis. Uh, nemesis. Uh, each hero and villain in the game has a nemesis. When two targets share a nemesis icon, all damage they deal to each other is increased by one. Click anywhere to finish the vill villain turn. Okay, powered turret will do some damage because it has an end of effect turn. Wait, that's right! Hmm? This is the only one of the raptors! <laughs> Let's see. This time there is no nemesis bonus as the turret is dealing the damage, not Baron Blades. Okay. And this is going to shoot everyone. Okay, removing effects. Yeah. Their, yeah, their power effect is done. At the start of Legacy's turn, the galvanized power you used last turn expires, so Legacy does not get the benefits from it himself. Uh, Flying Smash is another one-shot that can deal some damage immediately. Remember that since Baron Blade is Legacy's nemesis, Flying, Flying Smash will deal extra damage to Baron Blade. Okay. Also a rather typical superhero move, just fly straight through it all. Oh dear. Okay, that's four damage. And it's also going to hit the turret. For three, since, well, it doesn't count as the nemesis. Oh, and also the velociraptors. Just smashing through everything, huh? Okay. 
and then we can use Galvanize. Since it's the, the card doesn't count as a power. Inspiring Presence. Okay. Then we get Bunker. Sometimes the hero must make a sacrifice for the greater good. Bunker's external combustion card burns all the bad guys, but Bunker also takes some damage. Play external combustion. Let's see. Okay, that deals damage to himself, which actually got boosted, sadly enough. Uh, every non hero target, choose the order if you like, or press... Yeah, just go like that. Okay, that's going to destroy the turrets. And the Velociraptors. Okay. And then we can use the flak, ta uh, the flak cannon. And there's only one target left anyways. Adhesive, adhesive foam grenades. Okay. Wraith. There's a lot of the gadgets to carry around. Let's equip her utility belt so she can use an extra power during her power phase. There we go. Okay, can use her innate power stealth and her throwing knife. Okay. Reduce the next damage that would be dealt to the Wraith by two. Always nice. And then we, well, attack with these again. So there's only one target, so there's only one target, uh, one turn of damage that can be dealt. Yeah, stop dealing damage because there's no other targets. Smoke bombs. Yes. She's, mid, she's a bit more of a mix between Raven and Batman. <clears throat> okay, on Tachyon's previous turn, you played her card pushing limits. Now you must decide whether she should take two Sonic damage or destroy that card. Keep in mind, it's actually three damage because Legacy is increasing her damage by one. However, playing more cards is great, so go ahead and pay the price. So yeah, damage boosting can uh, be detrimental as well on the effects that damage your own characters. <clears throat> Supersonic response deals a target to melee damage, because uh, also because Baron Blade damaged Tachyon as his turn. If she targets him, she will deal an additional two Sonic damage. With Legacy's help, these are increased to three damage each, so Tachyon will, deal, uh, will effectively deal six damage to Baron Blade with his card. Okay. Uh, scroll your hand to find... Uh, Okay, because you already have a hand that on some screens would probably get pushed off, have it pushed off screen. There we go. Deals one target to two melee damage. If that target dealt damage since your last turn, she dealt to that target two extra damage. Or another two damage. Okay, confirm. And the second hit. Okay. When a one-shot card is played, it goes to the hero's trash. If the top, uh, in the top corner of Tachyon's panel is a trash icon with a number on it, press this to see the cards in Tachyon's trash. Okay. Each card has a box containing keywords below the card's image and above the card's text. These keywords describe what kind of card it is. Note how many burst cards are in the trash by examining these keywords now. And explain why that's important in just a moment. Okay, we have two burst ones. I'm guessing we'll get a we'll get handed a card that allows us to pull burst cards out of the trash. <clears throat> from this icon, uh, from its icon, we can see that Lightspeed Raj does melee damage. Double click it to find out exactly what it does. There. Okay, deals one target X melee damage, where X is the number of burst cards in your trash. Okay. So. <laughs> Okay, that's actually smarter than I thought it would be. So yeah, we play that. And that's, well, two burst cards, plus one. That's three damage. Bring this bastard down to 15. Okay. Then in grenade power. Sucker punch. Destroy one target with two or fewer HP. That is actually going to be bad for us. So, we put that away since, well, he's not with only 2 HP. Uh, oh, wait, I, I, did I not discard it then? Or Oh, well. Only a small hiccup. Uh, volcanic Eruption. 
You will each target seven fire damage. The volcano erupted. A hero can skip their turn to destroy this card before the next environmental turn. Otherwise, the volcanic eruption will deal a toasty seven fire damage to each target in play. Okay, most of the play, yeah, most of the cards played so far deal damage, but some cards heal targets, which is he, what he's going to do. Yep, ten HP. And there goes the buff. Legacy may choose to skip the rest of his turn to spare his allies from the volcanic eruption. However, you might want to check your hands first. Press meanwhile to take a look at the game area. <laughs> <laughs> Making good use of uh, another trope. You can see your cards in your in hand, as well as what the other heroes have by clicking on them. When you're ready to go back to your choice, press meanwhile again. Okay. So yeah, I information is likely the biggest thing in card games like this. Like you see, the leader of the, his team, and he'll be and he'll yeah, and he'll gladly throw himself between danger and his allies. Press yes to take one for the team. Okay. Trying to move a copy of Obsidian Field into play, but that got noped. That should be enough to get you started. Remember, play power draw and you'll be fine. There are a few more things to keep in mind as you play. You've managed to reduce Baron Blade to zero HP. It's not over yet. Villains can flip to the other side of their card, which changes the rules a bit. To win, you must defeat Baron Blade on both sides. In Sentinels of the Multiverse, there are additional villains which have different reasons to flip and each provide a unique challenge. Likewise, if one of your heroes is reduced to zero HP, they aren't out of the game. While incapacitated, each hero has special abilities that they can use on their turn to help their allies. So don't just let all your heroes fall. If they do, just don't let all your heroes fall. If they do, it's game over. So yeah, basically every fight in this is a boss fight. Uh, we talked about skipping damage dealing, but you can also skip many other actions in the game. The skip button just above the trash will skip the current phase. If you choose to skip both your play and power phase, you get to draw an extra card. You can also turn back time in a limited fashion. The rewind button in the menu bar will allow you to jump back to a previous action, all the way back to the previous hero's turn. If you accidentally play a card, a card or encounter an unintended consequence of a power you can undo. Okay, that, that is very that is very lenient, because typically in stuff like this, once it's done, you'll have to live with it no matter what. And there's just a how to play option as well. Okay. Uh, how much time do we still have on this? Three minutes, so let's see if we can at least beat down his <laughs> this side of him. Turret modes. Uh, destroy all other card modes. You cannot play or draw cards. You may use one additional power during your power phase. Increase damage by one. Okay. Yeah. Just. What? Okay. Oh no! I get it. Now I get it. Let's see. Environment card can be played. I have to literally played. say it to get it. Yeah. Okay, use that. Yeah, target. So yeah, I've, I've tried to play this game a few times, but I've never been able to actually beat any of the villains. Which is Not supposed to be the point, one? it's supposed to be tough. Let's see. You gain two health. Uh, with your damage to the targets with the lowest HP, redirect that to the hero target with the highest HP. Reduce damage directed, redirected by one. Um, let's do that one. <clears throat> and then we attack. So yeah, th this is a really cool game, but again, it's not really our style. Yeah. Okay. And we can still use this because of the utility belt giving us another ability. Use inventory barrage. Destroy all your equipment cards. Deals one damage. Okay. Uh, let's take the damage. Okay. Uh, use each non your target one damage, not really useful. Destroy one environment card or ongoing cards. There are none of those in play. 
Uh, draw two cards, discard one. That one is absolutely useless, so let's use this one as well. And skip on that. Okay. Let's see. Draw three cards. Yeah, she, she's all about just drawing and burning cards. Yeah, she gets two of those. Uh, let's see. We can destroy that one. Uh, another card during your play phase. <laughs> okay. It is a foam prevented it from, uh, from acting. Uh, first time Baron Blade is dealt damage by a target. Uh, let's see, what is that? Uh, deals that target three lightning damage. Okay. Yeah, uh, he and do look now. He has different background. Hmm. Uh, it, it still fits in with the rest, though. Oh, the, yeah. Of, uh, I... It does. I do feel like each of them have their, their each own background. I think to them, but the background does reflect the arena they are in, I'm gonna guess. So if we get go we enter another arena, they all gonna gonna probably have a different backgrounds again. But the background's gonna be probably in theme with the arena. Yeah. I'm guessing. Okay, uh use two damage, may deal a second target. Okay. And that's the timer going off. I'm the, thing, the way I'm thinking that this character would... Uh, yeah, I, I played this game before, but... Bunker would probably work best if we just get him a few powers to use and then put him in turret mode to just go full DPS. What is his actually innate? Okay, his innate is draw a card. But yeah, the timer just went off, so we'll have to call it there, though. So yeah, again, a really good game. Uh, just not our style, and well... <laughs> I'm too dumb to get it to work, you know, to play it properly. And yeah, there is online multiplayer as well. Okay. Uh, let's see, we have time for no. one more game. Uh, it's a, it did almost feel like a port from a mobile game. They did show a mobile ad, uh, uh, a little ad on the side that they say they have uh, ported over another mobile game to PC or something. Hmm, maybe. It is likely available on mobile as well. And apparently my power bank has run out of power. And yeah, it's another Devolver Digital game. Okay. Yeah, my power bank must be out of power because my phone has stopped charging. <laughs> Normally I would normally I would use the USB cable that's tied to the computer, but well, we saw what that did with opening up the files on that, or attempting to open up a file on that, not doing anything on that. Okay, and yeah, Serious Sam Fusion. To start on the campaign, uh, DLC Jewel of the Nile. Okay, and yeah, Serious Sam Three BFE. Uh, the Serious Sam games may not be too widespread and known, but from what I do know, Serious Sam 3 is uh, considered the black sheep. <laughs> so, let's see how this goes. Uh, really, Taurist? For, <laughs> yeah. for non-FPS players, score will be multiplied by 11. I know there's some elements people liked about this game, but also a lot of elements that people dislike. Like, for I understand, there were elements the could have been well, but others definitely were a bit undercooked. By the middle of the 21st century, having bled Earth dry, mankind was on the verge of collapse. Then a startling discovery was made. Beneath the sands of the earliest known human civilization, traces of another, even more ancient, but technologically advanced civilization are uncovered. I would call it a bit more than a trace. The profound scientific implications of this discovery would lead humankind to the far reaches of the universe. Everything seemed perfect, but perfect never lasts. Without warning, the Earth was attacked by a chaotic horde of marauding aliens. 
Within three years, humankind was staring into the face of its own annihilation. In desperation, the world leaders turned to their last chance, an ancient artifact called the Time Lock. They believed this relic from a long forgotten race was a portal to a point in ancient history and their only chance for survival. If only they knew how to turn it on. Okay, and seeing one of the enemies there just reminded me that I believe this game has some, uh, <laughs> would need a bit of censorship. Like the naked harpy you could see from the back, they're also naked on the front. So I'll just have to yeah. quickly look if there's a censor option somewhere. Yeah, but Twitch are a bit more sensitive. Like, YouTube will probably ignore it depending on context. Yeah. <laughs> it makes it a bit ironic because uh, the game we have planned for tonight, Apotheon also has a bit of nudity in it, but in a lot more stylistic way. A yeah, yes, less, like... Uh, uh, Shantae, yeah. if you think about it. Shantae can kind of count in that area. But not Shantae mm. herself, but it's all her forms. Yeah, not really nudity, more just suggestiveness. That is totally tolerated. Don't have you forgotten her she had no clothes at all in her mermaid form? I just removed the meat. I'm supposed to be doing blow off a stripper's ass right now. And I hope you got me a good present, Stone. All right, Alpha. Listen up. Bravo team was protecting a scientist in one of the old museums in Cairo, but HQ lost contact around 0900 hours. Mental wants to fry the Earth, and we're protecting a museum? This guy thinks he can figure out how to power up the time lock. Bullshit. Research don't kill aliens. Big guns do. Whatever. You get big time guns. No. Research. Out there alone. We get in there. We recon Bravo. We go home. If everything goes tits up, the professor is our top priority. Are we clear? Clear as nar shit. Rodriguez. Warning. Warning. We've got him coming. Take a base of action. Let's hope they can read a map. <laughs> oh dear. Shit. Yeah, yeah. Before anything else, uh, motion sickness options. Nice that's in there. Uh, graphic options. Uh, to the color. Uh, okay, game options. Blood and gore. Gibbs. Samboys, hold to aim. Um, okay, I guess we better hope we don't run into those harpies then. Since it doesn't seem to be an option to pull, uh, turn it off. Or, uh, let's see, I, I forget who I saw a video of on, on this game. It, if it was... Uh, Okay, I'm blanking on one of their names at the moment. I'm pretty sure Civi yeah. has done a review of this. Maybe Civi, maybe G-Man Lives. G-Man Lives, that's the name. I think he did a video or might have done a video on this as well. I think so too. You ought to be more careful. You'll put an eye out. <laughs> uh, Nope. Hello. I did, I did not remember he could do that. Give me some stones he... and one of these, and it's a party. Stone, it's Quinn. We picked up a mayday from Miller. Give me a sit rep. The chopper's Fubar. I ended up a few blocks away. I'm gonna rendezvous Alpha now. Stone, how many times do I have to tell you to wear your seatbelt? Eat me, Rodriguez. What's your 20? We're in front of the museum. You know, where we're supposed to be. Where the hell are you? Stay put. I'm on my way. Roger that. Uh, yes. Serious Sam is a very 
90s character, rather Duke Nukem-esque, but this, despite the name, the games are not to be taken seriously at all, I believe. Yeah, and unlike Duke Nukem, I think he has aged better in that way since... He, basically, unlike Duke Nukem, he's not, not much of a narcissist, if you get what I mean. Mm -hmm. And not as much as uh, averted. Like, I think he likes women, just not in the way Duke Nukem does it. Uh, one thing that people often misunderstand about Duke Nukem is that he's supposed to be, uh, what's the word, a hedonist, not a sexist. The hedonist definitely probably fits the bill, considering some of the endings, like when he gets to be properly curved. <laughs> What have we here? The keys. Okay, secret keys. They weren't that secret. Oh, they were glowing jumping. purple. I thought he was puking. <laughs> okay, okay, that's very old school jumping. Yeah. Like, as I say, this is probably the first game where he actually talks a bit, a bit more and have other characters to talk to. This caught people off guard, but people did, however, like, did at? like the idea. Just most of the other part of the game, they did not like. Oh, 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 oh this, this is, is getting the, serious. <laughs> Want the dead or alive? Sam, serious stone. <laughs> 1 million FC, whatever FC is. Okay, I, I like that you need to look at it a bit to translate it, because this let's be honest. Serious. If, if you're not a native, if, if your native language is English and you need to... This is getting serious. You stop repeating that st uh, stone. You, you need a few moments to actively translate something. Hello, there's something up there that we missed. Knock, knock. <laughs> and yeah, this game, this series is also very known for, well, Gibbs and such. Hmm. Okay, this might be a different version of the game than I was thinking of, or at least what I saw the video on, because I, one of the complaints I believe about this was that ew, everything was just brown. Like everything had a brown filter on top of it or such. No, it is. I think it is this game. Just it's one yeah, of the, those things that felt like down. Yeah, really? I mean, more that they lessened the visual effects that some people have complaints about. Yeah, though I do think it might be more referring to that. Uh, yeah, most of the places you're fighting are in some form of ruins. Rodriguez, I told you, I'll be there in a minute. It's Jones. Rodriguez took... Oh, Jesus Christ! Oh, shit. And those enemies. If you know Serious Sam, you know that scream. Also, hello there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Headless. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, yeah, let's keep going for... Okay, I... Do. Uh, I better not be aiming at... No, that, that's an Independence Day reference. Let's still get out of the possible blast area. Some arm... Okay, blue shine is armor, red shine is health. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's keep going for a bit more until it's uh, 5 p.m. Our typical stopping time. Uh, did I miss something? It, yeah, I completely missed the enemies. I will say that the graphics are quite nice. Uh, it has eight well, I say. Consider when it came out. Hmm. It wasn't that too long ago, was it? Uh, 2000 something, I think. Okay, any more? Well, yeah, the game is going easy on us with this now, but uh, later on when we actually get freaking firearms, then it's becoming, yeah, then it's going to be an absolute horde that'll be coming at us on every bloody turn. 
Nothing here. Did that fence just spawn in or render in? Mr. Ah, Smith, hello. Mr. Wesson, glad you could make it. Really? <laughs> ah. An all too familiar noise. And yeah, those those will run up to you and blow themselves up. Okay. We they got messages. Um Okay. Either that number next to the bu uh, bullets is okay, no, it's, I think okay. It's our it's our basic pistol, so of course we're going to have infinite ammo for this. What's this about messages? How can I access those? Hmm. Ah. Anyway, I think one complaint people had about this game was it was actually trying to be too serious when, well, the serious Sam games aren't supposed to be that serious. Well, mm. I don't also see if you were on Justin talking so much more for it, but used to hearing him do one liners. Yeah. No. What I saw, see, I don't think I mind him talk a bit more. But it does help build personality. They don't have a so <laughs> They don't have a hole to put a sock into Sam. Okay, now we're beginning with the hordes. What the heck? <laughs> Any more? And yeah, that's just a taste of just these sheer hordes that you should generally be seeing in a series Sam game. Is there anything here? Yeah, it's not so. That looks explosive. Okay, but no holes in the walls. Okay. You... Quinn, I've got a visual on the chopper. What's Alpha status? I lost contact. In pieces. God damn it! Any survivors? Negative. And it's too hot out here to hang around. I'm heading inside to find Professor Stein. Copy that. Watch your six. That place is probably full of aliens. It's about to be full of dead aliens. Yeah. 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 Let's see. Is that the museum or which? This maybe? Yep. Probably. Did I just shot? I just shot one in the dick. I think. Yeah, it's probably where all the enemies are coming from. Yeah. Yep. I missed you somehow. If anything, you can definitely say that those guys more than announce their presence. Because they are if they get to you, they deal probably a lot of damage. So their self-announcement needs to be as much as, uh, as as loud as the amount of damage. Let's see. On the boat of sun they came. Osiris was at the helm. Anubis and Horus at his side. Okay. I did not expect that Sam would be able to read hieroglyphics. Oh, he has been to the, the pyramids and such many times before. Let's see. Enter Cairo Museum. Locate Professor Stein. Uh, North. Uh, the Museum of Egyptian Antiquities in Cairo was located in this building from 1902 to 2015. The building is now used in exactly the depot. Front entrance is blocked. Bra Team Bravo entry point. That's the ones we're looking for. Okay, so we need to go around the building. Let's see. Nar female, clear skeleton, beheaded rocketeer, beheaded kamikaze, sledgehammer, SOP 38 semi automatic pistol. Okay, not sure if those are supposed to be objectives or a uh, shopping list. <laughs> hmm. 
Hmm. Single armor. Okay, so the health packs won't push us past 100, but the extras will. Okay, so we just can't damage you at all until that you jump out. Jones bones. Really, Indiana Jones reference? And yeah, these things, they just charge. Basically, everything in this game tries to charge at you. Except for the shooters. Clacking of their bones makes it. You. Yeah. Yeah. Clacking of their bones makes it really easy to know that these are around. Yeah, the, the thing with many of the, the old boot, your boomer shooters is that you need to identify and prioritize targets. Time to do a little research. Okay, complete any level. Okay. okay, I think we can call it on that then. Yeah, like... Let there be I'll not be against like streaming this. Hmm. We'll need to research a bit about it if it is really as bad as I thought I heard it was. Yeah, I believe this is a special... Maybe... Really, are you serious? Okay, let's pull these two aside for next time. And let's see, second extinction. Uh, there is no real story, so it would have been a no even if it was going to get can if it if it wasn't going to get canned. Mega Drive and Genesis Classics. I wouldn't be against streaming some of the old games, perhaps. We'll need to find some that I would like first and see what the library yeah. what the library they have. So this is more a tool than anything else. Yeah, prefer the ones with the story, but then it would be a, hopefully easier to emulate those games, in a way. Hmm. Yeah. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Uh, I, would need to, I would need to see if there's maybe a lower difficulty, but they typically don't really have that. Uh, and otherwise, I'll just have to get good. <laughs> yeah. But I definitely oh, would God. want to stream that at some point or another. Semblance. Yeah. Hmm? I was I'm not against it, so I'm um, maybe yes on that, depending yeah. on how good you get. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking maybe more of a longer term side quest because uh, four hours of that every week might uh, <laughs> drive me to try and smash something. I'd rather not. <laughs> oh God! And yeah, semblance. It looks interesting enough, but. Yeah, a bit it's light annoyed. on story and such, or active story. Not to say that there isn't any that there's anything bad with games having light story. It's just not our style. Sentinels of the Multiverse, same thing, really. Good game, but uh, rather light on actual story. This is more about the enjoyment of the card game itself. And Serious Sam Fusion, uh, oh, 2017, not 20, uh, Wait, <laughs> not the 20 beta? zeros. <clears throat> What is it, beta? I think, uh, let me, actually, let me turn this off for a second, so I can, uh, can actually, uh, there we go, so I can like, take a look. I think it might be a bit similar to the Sega Mega Drive uh, emulator and such, library, uh, serious. You mean it was, it's a ported? Hmm. Uh, oh, okay, I see it was something. Uh, I, apparently, I have Serious Sam 3 BFE and this Fusion. I don't no idea why I might have gotten it from, though. <clears throat> but, hmm. Okay, so there possibly are two different versions of the game. Hmm. I might need, oh. need to look into that a bit. And, uh, oh, apparently this game is... <laughs> apparently this game is, has an active... <clears throat> Hmm. Apparently, this Fusion Edition has an active modding scene still. Okay. Because it has right, featured so it... mods in, the, in its news bar. All right, so maybe it's not it's so well bad after that. all if it actually have a modding community. Yeah, that's a bunch of serious Sam tools. Okay, I can see why there would be a lot of mods for it. 
But yeah, just featured mod, Crystal Impact, Seven Smoke Tennis Project, <laughs> Jingle Bombs 2020. Okay, at the very least, it seems like people are having fun with the mods uh, and such. Hmm. Actually, maybe it's... Let me, let me do it. Let me take a quick look as to when this one actually released. It might be... Uh, 2011. Okay, so... Fusion is sort of a later version of something with more mod support, maybe? It might be a re-release. Yeah, because this one has... This one's news bit is has been dead since 2020. Okay. Definitely we'll need to look into that a bit more then. But for now... Let me close that off. And we will head over here. <clears throat> to, well, go look for someone to raid. So let me close off the preview projector, move the browser front and center, and change the screen share to it. There and there. Now, let's see. Okay, we have Dr. Misunderstood with The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Ages, Redacted Cat with StarCraft 2, Moonrise is playing Jackbox, Isaiah Rasir is playing <coughs> Psychonauts 2, Kirinas Yoko with Doom 2, Karenai with Rogue Trader, the new Warhammer 40k game. Uh, let's see, they typically start rather early on these, so they're probably in their pre-stream with that. Actually, no, they've been going for an hour and a half already. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess we know who to raid then. <laughs> yeah, Kirinai is also playing Rogue Trader. Gracious the Dwarf is having their seemingly weekly psychology open house stream. Okay. Well, raid the duck then. Yeah, let's raid the duck. Okay, copy name. All right. Slash raid and paste. But before we start that, of course, let me check for any of our typical lurkers. Uh, no, Sensei is having a break, it seems. <clears throat> Pardon? <clears throat> seems my throat is acting up again. All right, then. Uh, yeah, a, a good selection of games, I'd say. Some I would have uh, preferred they would, well, have kept working on, but, oh uh, well, it's just sometimes you have developers who are just, yeah, either through their uh, own it, actions or through management's actions, just, yeah. Yeah, it, it is, like, I wasn't really having too much high hope for the world I didn't release, people will overhype and not play for enough interest in it, but... Searing all that work and just thrown out without knowing the true reason yeah. is not uh, even even not as a player. I feel like that's uh, shifty. It's either so, understandable or just greedy. Like yeah. So just be careful about any game made by systemic reaction because, like I said, their name could just as easily be systemic abandonment. Yeah. <laughs> Question: Should we start next stream at usual hour, or should we dare to do a three-hour special of uh, Pufion? Hmm. We'll have to look. It's uh, it's the weekly family dinner again, so I don't know how long that might go. Uh, but at the very least, we should, if nothing, if it doesn't go on too long, we can go for the typical two hours. But we could try for a longer stream, yeah. Yeah, like, if you get home early enough, we could go for three hours, if not, regular two hours. Uh, th this week it's at our place, because it's bi-weekly on that, so one week at our place, uh, the other week at theirs, our place, theirs, just swapping back and forth like that. So there's no issue about travel time, it's just how long the dinner might go on. Uh, all right. Or how much you eat. Yeah. It and that's the timer actually running out on the last game. And yeah, if... Again, speaking of nothing getting in the way... Uh, hopefully tomorrow we'll be able to do a multiplayer Left 4 Dead stream with Rom and Liz. And, well, just have ourselves some Nightmare Before Christmas shenaniganery. <laughs> with some mods uh, we slap hope, together. <laughs> I just hope they... If they do the damn power thing tomorrow, I hope they do it before this stream and not in the middle of it. Yeah, hopefully. <clears throat> but for now, let's get that rate started. Uh, yeah, I, I, a bit early on that. Actually, I can just cancel that. There we go. Okay. Uh, yeah. 
<laughs> now before we actually start the raids, thank you everyone who's watching now or later. Thank you Pyro Sue and thank you as always Dirk here. You're welcome as always, my friend. I thank you all for jo joining and watching this madness. <laughs> okay, and now we'll actually start that raid. And yeah, thank you again for watching now or later. And until next time, have a nice day. And until then. Be safe, everyone. And watch out for 100 seagulls. And, well, <laughs> many, many things. T-Rexes, super villains, <laughs> and the ancient samurai. And his screaming bomb guys. Ugh. <laughs>